Sorry. My name is Masi Kialo from Kialo Culture, and I'm glad to be here. <laughs> Masi, you look amazing. Thank Tell you. us about your style tonight. Yeah, I worked with our stylist Winnie Odande. She's amazing. I wanted something that was going to show off my body curves because I think they're amazing, and just leave the face for the makeup artist to work with. And I think she did an amazing job because I wanted something elegant. Um, I don't like to show skin. So I wanted something that was going to cover me uh, and still make me feel sexy. And she did a great job. All right, yeah. a long awaited night. It's yes. finally here. You yes. guys have launched Kai Kialo Culture. Yeah. How do you feel about the reception so far? Oh my God, the reception is overwhelming. Like we've been shooting for the last, uh, I would say four or five months. But then when we announced that it's happening, everyone, the excitement and the traction was so much. It actually made me anxious. I was like, I even started talking to my producer and I'm like, oh my God, are you sure I should wear that? Are you sure I should say that? Because, you know, people are really watching. I was so anxious. Yeah. So entrepreneur turned TV reality star. <laughs> Tell us about how do you feel about it? <laughs> it's amazing. You know, the business world and the entrepreneurship world is very different. The corporate world is all about, you know, talking a certain way, dressing a certain way, keeping yourself in a certain way. But I, I feel like reality show and the and, and the entertainment industry is different. It requires another side of you to be shown. Um, and it's just really different <laughs> to be in the entertainment industry. Mm -hmm. yeah. Your baby sister Gloria, yeah. right? She came out, showed as a boyfriend. What about you? Yeah. Are we expecting something? Shockers. Should I show you my boyfriend, you guys? Yes, I might Aisha too as soon as I show you guys. No, no, no. Because I'm going to in Aisha. You know what? I would love to protect my relationship. I have just gotten into a new relationship. So I just want to protect it a little bit before everyone can, you know, give their comments and talk about the person. My last relationship was really blasted on Edgar Obara's page. And it was just so weird because, you know, we weren't ready for that kind of reception. And we'd walk around, everyone would be taking secretly, taking pictures and, you know, and it was very uncomfortable. So for my guy right now, I just want him to be a little comfortable with even me as a person. The fact that I have a lot of attention and I get a lot of media attention. I just want him to be a little simulated on that and then I can show him to the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are we going to see maybe an episode of you too in the culture? Can I say you need to tune in? <laughs> I think you need to tune in to see. But then for sure, I promise you, a lot about my personal life mm -hmm. and you need to tune in to see it right. yeah maybe you can share with us what is new uh, in this new relationship oh my god that is a nice question okay so for sure what is new about this relationship is that we are so supportive of one another and we love love i think in many relationships you're just like cold and you know you wanna your ego is there and then this relationship is different because we are both turning 30 and we just feel like it's a different time of our lives and you know we want to love love and love being with one another and be proud of that yeah you mentioned that you're turning 30 yes. all right what what advice do you have for um the younger generation the 20s that are seeing you uh, mercy an entrepreneur you're also in reality what what advice would you tell them no advice just <laughs> Why? No advice. Uh -huh. You know, life throws punches, whatever is on your way. Just live your life and love it while you live it. You know, uh, as you grow older, you will get, you ju you're judged by your decisions. And sometimes it's a hard judgment because of the decisions you make. But never feel apologetic about anything you decide to do. I think anything I can tell about... I can tell you, as a young person, live your life to the fullest, however you wish to live it. Live your mark as you wish to live it. No one should tell you anything. Yeah, that's why I say I have no advice, because everyone is free to live the way they want to live. Yeah.
You're turning 30. Yes. Um, are you planning to move in together, settle down anytime yeah. soon? Yeah. So I'm just turning 30. Uh, there are no other plans other than that. We both have, it's so interesting that you asked that question because we both have beautiful homes, each of us, beautiful homes that we really truly love. So, you know, ev even when we met, there was some awkward silence as to, you know, like, which house will we choose and, you know, which lifestyle will we take because my lifestyle and his life is very different but we are very established in our lifestyle. Um, I love my very country lifestyle, Tigoni, horses, and he loves his lifestyle with gaming equipment, friends, and so, it, you know, and he, ha he loves his house. I love mine, so I, I mean, I, get, I don't know, we, I don't know, I don't know what we'll do, because we, we have grown into loving our lives however we've made it. So, but we, we do enjoy each other's company, so yeah, yeah, we don't know, <laughs> I don't know what to say, I don't know, we, we're really at the point where we don't know what to do next, because we both love our spaces. And talking about, uh, Masi, talking about your house yeah. and your, your, your home, I mean, yeah. Uh, where, where did you get the inspiration of uh, having a country home like there with the horses, all that? And uh, uh, how did you uh, decide to convert your home into an, an events location? Yeah. So before I lived there, I was living with my sister, Betty, in Kilimani. The lifestyle in Kilimani, I, I don't really envy the lifestyle, but it's very up and down, so many people, media, photos, like anything you do, People are really looking. So when I got the option of moving to Tigoni, I took it because the lifestyle there is different. It's slower, people are kinder, neighbors know each other, neighbors are family members and friends. So I love that slow, la beautiful lifestyle. That's why I chose that lifestyle. But mm, when it comes to him, no, what did you ask, Kari? Uh, uh, converting your home to a, to a resi oh, an yeah. event residence. You know, I'm a business enthusiast. Any business that comes around, I also I always want to try it out. So I always, like from 10 years ago, always wanted to have an Airbnb. And I remember the time I was living with my sister in South B, and I was telling her, you know, people convert their homes into like hotels, and she didn't get the, the point. So when I got my house, I was very intentional. I wanted to try out the that space of, you know, hotels and and that business so that's why i'm so adventurous in terms of renting out my house to to do all those things but i want to say the truth the truth is after giving out my house a couple of times i have clients who send me pictures and they're like oh we love this space we love this space and instead of feeling really nice i end up feeling a little jealous i'm like oh my god that's that's my kitchen that's my toilet that's my bedroom you know i've become so personal with my space so currently the space is only available for family and friends i'm still trying to understand how to do this like a real business and give the space away to you know people um that's my challenge right now but i love the business the business of sharing homes the business of turning your own home into a hotel. I love that concept. I just didn't know when it was coming to me that I'd have to share my bedroom, my toilet, my kitchen, and my very private spaces. So that's been a challenge. Yeah. Maybe you can share with us maybe uh, your relationship now with sisters, your, your two sisters, yeah. you having the reality together, yeah. always shooting together. First, it has made us way closer than we were. My sisters and I, you know, you, we have an amazing relationship. We are almost the same age, so we understand each other in a very different way. But then that also means that, you know, we fight a lot as well about, like Betty says, clothes. Mara, you've worn my top, you've worn my trousers, my shoes, you've worn them out, you know, it's painful. But and we get to talk about that. The thing about the show, it has brought us closer because now we have to work together. We have to see each other almost each and every week, you know, three times a time, three times a week, shooting together. So it's it's made us super close, and also just being able to talk to DNR, or like we call them, Young Rich, our production um, partners, just to be able to like illustrate our life together and to to be a force to say 
no, we don't want to film that, or yes, we want to film that. That has brought us together. And many times we are brought to a situation where we have to choose, you know, do you want to show that? Or, you know, do you want to you don't wanna show that? So we are so particular in terms of what we want to show, and that has brought us closer. Uh, obviously, you being the child of Cisco, uh, uh, we, we know you have a story from your family. Are we going to see both your folks in the series? Yes, you're going to see both my folks, my mom and my dad. My mom, obviously, you're going to see her a bit more. Um, my dad, you're not going to, you're, you're going to see, he has a part in the series. You're going to see his side of the story. But I've al we've always been very honest about how we grew up. My dad left when I was 10 years old. And that also has an effect in how things played out in our lives. You know, so we became a bit closer to my mom and everything. And he came back when I was 21. And, you know, those 10 years, you could feel that and you can see, you can see that. And that's why this show is a bit different. It's different because it's really the reality of the situation. Um, I love my dad and we are in a, we, we are in great, we, we have a great relationship. But then he's not as present because he wasn't as present you know, in the most formative years of our lives. Um, but he still has a role and you get to see him. He, he's an amazing supporter. Yeah. Uh, just a, as a final, a final message, uh, what, what should your fans look forward, both for you and Yellow Leather? Talk about Yellow Leather. Yeah. One, I would love my fans to see the behind the scenes, how I come up with designs, how we brainstorm on what's cool, what's not cool, what will be taken up by women or men as a trend. And so that's the process that we're showing when it comes to yellow, because a lot of people usually ask me about my business secrets, business successes and everything. So with this show, I get to show you the background, how I come up, you know, what my team is like, what that team represents to me and how we come up with designs, how we come up with everything. So I just wanted to show you a candid side of me that I never get to show on social media. And I think generally what the show will do for all our fans is show the side we don't get to show on social media. Sometimes social media is very brief and very plastic. You know, a pretty picture, you take the picture. You know, a pretty reel, you take the reel. But you don't know behind that nice smiling face what's happening so i guess the show really gets behind the face behind the smile behind the celebrities and you know you get to see a little bit about who we really are all right but before we end um uh, your trailer you said something that why <laughs> date a man oh who can't God. take that care of yourself no 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 oh, oh, take me up and then women have come out and they're speaking and actually it has become a mantra <laughs> what do you have to say about that Guys, I don't know. Okay, look, you know when you're on the show, you just asked your opinion. And my opinion, and you never know that opinion is going to have such an effect. My opinion was, why should you have a boyfriend who can't take care of you, you know? And as a girl, the reason you're a girl and you feel like a girl is because there's a boy out there, you know, taking care of you, making sure you're happy, you're safe, you're okay, you're home. You know, this, this little things. And like I was telling you, my new relationship is showing me a new side to life, a new side to love. And I want, I want everyone to embrace that, including my sisters. So on the show, I, wanted, I want my sisters to embrace relationships that take care of them, that are you know, nutritional to them. So that even if you leave a guy after some time, whoever knows whatever time, you have grown as a human being. You have you know, elevated yourself. And that's where I am right now. I think my relationship just has really like empowered me. So why should you have a boyfriend who doesn't take care of you? Why? <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for the time. Hope Thank to see you, you again. Guys. Thank you guys. You were so much fun. I love you guys. It was amazing. Thank you.